How to Grow Asparagus Asparagus is a wonderful perennial plant. It is therefore a vegetable that you will plant once and enjoy for many seasons. In addition asparagus grown in the ground can be harvested successively every year for several months practically every day. And if you grow them in a warm greenhouse, you can harvest them all year round. Green asparagus is much easier to grow than white asparagus. It is the same plant but to get white asparagus, you need to bury them in earth embankments formed above them. Green asparagus simply grows without additional treatments. The only downside is that before we get beautiful thick stems we have to wait two or three years from sowing, then we can harvest beautiful asparagus. You can also buy ready carp, but they are quite expensive. Cultivation of asparagus takes about 12 to 15 years. Therefore, the most common choice for asparagus cultivation is a place excluded from crop rotation for several years, warm sunny and sheltered from the wind. It belongs to the lily family. The edible part of the plant are the fleshy shoots called bracts. We start harvesting at the turn of April and May. Asparagus was eaten in ancient times, among others in Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Mostly wild green forms were eaten, while the Romans began to whiten asparagus by covering it. In the Middle Ages, asparagus was a bit forgotten, but it returned to the tables and is widely cultivated. White asparagus is more popular, but green asparagus is more nutritious. Green asparagus contains twice as much vitamin C as white asparagus. Asparagus develops well in Europe climatic conditions in the ground. It withstands low temperatures in winter. If there are very severe frosts and snowless winters, the yield of asparagus may suffer in quality. The emergence of bracts is delayed, the yield is lower and the asparagus tends to be hollow. Asparagus buds develop when the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. The higher the temperature, the faster they grow. On the other hand, growth is inhibited when it is colder than 5 degrees Celsius. Then the asparagus that sticks out above the ground freezes at a temperature of minus 4 to 5 degrees Celsius. For this reason, asparagus is not grown in areas with late frosts and in frost reservoirs where excessive water accumulates and freezes. Higher temperature causes faster growth, green mass gain, asparagus is less woody and less bitter. Under favorable conditions, asparagus is harvested every 1 to 11 days. However, excessive heat with water shortage and droughts are not recommended. As a result of the appearance of such weather conditions, the bracts lose quality, harden and very quickly begin to grow into twigs, in particular green asparagus that are on the surface. Both heat and drought as well as frost and excessive moisture inhibit the growth of asparagus. Poor quality soils additionally cause rusting of their surface. At low temperatures, the spikes easily turn purple when in contact with the sun's rays, even after a short time. The best climatic conditions for obtaining a high yield in the next season are warm summer and warm autumn, because such conditions allow the accumulation of large amounts of nutrients in the storage roots through photosynthesis and the formation of a large number of thick rhizomes. High temperature also favors the formation of large carps. Asparagus is a plant that requires a lot of light. They cannot be grown among other plants that can shade them, or, for example, under trees. It reacts very badly to weed overgrowth, especially at the stage of young seedlings, seed beds, and the first years of growth. In addition to the fact that the asparagus bed should be fully exposed to the sun, it should also be uncovered for the free flow of air. Only a cover from the side of the wind will be beneficial, which can break tall plants, but so as not to shade the flower bed. Asparagus does not require too much water because its stumps and root system is quite well developed and draws water from a large surface of the soil. However, water deficiency causes inhibition of seedling development and poor seedling acceptance. If the soil is light, in the first and second year after planting the seedlings, the asparagus may suffer from water shortage due to the still shallow root system. Very light soils may crumble if we create embankments for white asparagus. For older asparagus, the lack of rainfall is especially harmful during the harvest period, because not only growth is inhibited, but also the uptake of minerals. It is in July and August that asparagus grows the strongest. 
Regular watering should be ensured during this period. It should be mentioned that excessively watered asparagus breaks down and collapses, which makes further development difficult. If planted too shallow, wines can damage the plants. However, a slight draft is necessary, especially if they are growing in hollows. This prevents diseases. The best conditions for asparagus are in early warm spring. Good yields are obtained when the temperature in May stays below 12 degrees Celsius. Such conditions are found in the middle belt of Poland. Pomerania and mountain regions are not favorable. Asparagus has little energy value because it contains 95% water. Nutritionally, green asparagus is more valuable. They contain vitamins from group B, PP, and C and provitamin A. Asparagus contains much more iron and cobalt than other vegetables. Their flavor and aroma comes from the sulfur they contain, as well as methylmercaptan, acetaldehyde, and other compounds. Sometimes there is a bitter taste in asparagus, especially in the lower part. This is due to the excessive accumulation of asparagin. Green asparagus is less bitter. Even the best tasting asparagus is spoiled by fibers. They usually include the first outer ring which is removed prior to consumption by peeling the vegetable. Asparagus belongs to the lily family and is a perennial, i.e. a perennial green plant, of which only the underground part is permanent. In a temperate climate it develops in spring and dies in autumn, but in a warm climate, e.g. in a greenhouse, it does not stop growing and grows all year round. Thanks to this, it can be rushed and cultivated even in January. However, it should be remembered that the rest period has a positive effect on the yield of the plant. Prolonged drought in a warm climate also causes the plant to go dormant. The underground part of the asparagus is the carp. It consists of a rhizome and roots growing from it. The annual growth of the rhizome is 3 to 7 centimeters. With age, the rhizome becomes thicker and woody, and the oldest part dies. On the surface there are buds from which shoots grow. Fibrous roots grow every year in spring and die in autumn. Thick fleshy roots absorb nutrients, and thin fibrous roots absorb water and mineral salts. Individual roots can reach up to 3 meters into the soil, but the main roots are up to 1 meter deep. Asparagus roots are sensitive to lack of air, so they look for the right conditions. Root mass increases mainly in the first years. From the fifth to the sixth year of cultivation, a balance is created between the mass of new and dying roots. After 10 years, the dieback of the roots predominates rather than the formation of new ones. Thus, a well-developed root system is one of the factors determining a high yield. Plant the asparagus root at a depth of 20 cm below the soil surface. The plant puts all its energy and accumulated minerals to sprout thick fleshy shoots called bracts, in the spring. If they grow without light, they are white. Under the influence of sunlight, they gradually turn purple and then green. As it grows further, the shoots become woody and branch out strongly. They usually reach a height of 2 meters. The triangular scales visible on the stem are asparagus leaves, but they are not capable of photosynthesis. On young stems, the leaves are concentrated on the head. Then they transform into bundles of needles. Asparagus is a dioecious plant, male and female flowers are on different individuals. They also take various intermediate forms, but in older plants there is a predominance of male individuals. Asparagus usually blooms in the second year, but there is also a bloom in the seed bed in the first year of cultivation. When they do not yield, they begin to bloom in April, and those that yield bloom around July. Their flowers are pollinated by bees but can also self-pollinate. Male plants start to yield earlier and give about 30% more yield than female plants, however, their bracts are thinner than those of female plants. Female plants have a shorter lifespan and are less productive as they use more energy to produce fruit and seeds. Those that produce a large amount of them are not desirable. Male asparagus, although thinner, there are more of them and they grow stronger. Asparagus fruit is a berry that is initially green and then red. There are about 6 seeds in the fruit. 1 gram of seeds is 35 to 60 pieces. The soil for growing asparagus should be light. 
Such soil warms up faster and dries faster in the spring, which is conducive to faster and better development of asparagus, and also increases its yield. Such soils are easy to build embankments for white asparagus. They are also simple and rust-free. It is also easier to collect them. Clay, cold and stony soils are unacceptable for asparagus cultivation. It is good to enrich the soil with compost and humus. If you plan to grow white asparagus, choose light soil with a high content of humus or sandy loam. Clay, however, should not be located at a depth of not less than 50 cm from the surface, because when extracted to the surface, it can form a crust. The clay that is deeper retains water, making the top layer dry. The soil to a depth of 1 meter should not be compacted, it must not contain, for example, in strongly pods all each soils. Asparagus roots cannot penetrate such soil. Green asparagus, on the other hand, can be grown in more compact soils, but two compact soils such as clay are not suitable for growing asparagus, especially white ones. Asparagus then have a problem with growth and coming to the surface, they are crooked, rough, fibrous, and bitter. It must not be soil that tends to crust. Not only asparagus does not have the strength to grow on such soil, but also such soil heats up late, dries badly, which delays harvesting and reduces yield. Soils that are too light or too compact should be combined with a large amount of humus, which should fix them. Humus improves the physical properties of the soil, which results in better yield and easier harvesting. Asparagus does not tolerate wet soils, with water stagnation, periodically flooded. If you notice stagnant water during the spring thaw, do not plant asparagus there. The optimal groundwater level is 80 to 100 centimeters. If the soil is too wet, the roots can be damaged. This threat occurs especially in winter and early spring. The heavier and more compact the soil, the lower the water level should be to create favorable conditions. Also, the lighter the soil, the more water should be there. Unsuitable soils, i.e. with too high or too low a water level, should be drained before asparagus is planted. For asparagus cultivation, the pH of the soil should be between 6 and 7 on light soils and between 6.5 and 7.5 on heavier soils. With too acidic and too alkaline reaction, asparagus grows worse, yields poorly and also lives shorter. Generally acidic soil is not suitable for growing asparagus. The surface of the planting bed should be even. Bevels along the rows can wash away fertilizers or herbicides. Water stagnation and rotting of underground parts of asparagus may also occur. It is best for asparagus to grow exposed to the south side, where the soil warms up quickly and the spring harvest is accelerated. Asparagus is propagated only from seeds that are sown in a seed bed. Propagation by dividing older carps is not used because the plants obtained in this way often get sick and die quickly. The production of such seedlings takes quite a long time, about 12 months. Seeds are sown in the spring, and the rootstock is dug up in the spring of the following year. When setting up an asparagus plantation, we use one-year-old carp. A two-year-old seedling, it develops and accepts less. The older the carp we repot, the longer it takes for them to regenerate. Producing your own carp from seeds is much cheaper. The best soil for an asparagus seed bed will be sandy loam, humus-free, not waterlogged and drying early in the spring. It is best when the pH of the soil is neutral. If it is less than 6, liming should be applied a year earlier, before planting the seedlings. 1 to 1.5 tons per hectare of carbonate lime, preferably magnesium are used. In autumn, when preparing the soil for asparagus cultivation, fertilize with manure 60 kg per 10 square meters. It must be dug to a depth of 20 cm with the soil. Phosphate and potassium fertilizers can also be used in autumn, e.g. 15 dg of superphosphate and 30 dg of potassium salt. You can also fertilize in spring, with azofosca, about 15 dg per 10 square meters. It should be remembered that the patch should be well cleaned of weeds, especially underground perennial rhizomes. 
Due to the risk of asparagus disease and rust, we never plant asparagus where it was previously grown. For the same reason, we also do not plant asparagus after alfalfa, clover, legumes, beets, and carrots. In autumn, it is advisable to fertilize with manure from 30 to 60 tons per hectare. Before winter, the soil should be dug deep, and in early spring apply phosphate and potassium fertilizers. Ammonium nitrate, potassium salt, and superphosphate are used. Fertilizers should be well mixed with the soil and its surface leveled. Asparagus seeds are sown directly into the ground in a seed bed from the end of March to the end of April. Under average conditions, germination and emergence occur after 4 to 6 weeks. The optimal germination temperature is 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, emergence occurs after 10 days, while at a minimum temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, emergence occurs after 8 weeks. To significantly accelerate germination and emergence, soak the seeds in water at a temperature of 25 to 35 degrees Celsius for 2 or 3 days. Soaked seeds should be slightly dried and seasoned, then sown in moist soil. An appropriate preparation is used for dressing, e.g. seed dressing tea. One-year-old seeds germinate best, but they retain their germination capacity for three to seven years. To produce good quality rootstock, one hectare should be sown with one kilogram of seeds. We sow 1,000 square meters of seed bed with this amount of seeds. Carp is planted in rows of 60 cm at a distance of 40 cm from each other. The depth of sowing seeds is 3 cm and the distance between seeds in a row is 5 cm. They may have a tendency to grow together, so keep the distance when sowing, 10 cm. Subsequent thinning and separation of the intergrown tangle of carp roots is quite difficult. If we want to mark the asparagus sowing row, Add 200 grams of radish seeds to 1 kilogram of seeds, the radish growing quickly will mark the rows for us. On large areas, if weeds appear before the asparagus emerges, spraying is used. In the flower bed, when sowing is too dense, interruption can be used, leaving the plants every 10 centimeters in a row. The break is made during the growth of the first and second shoots by removing the plants together with the underground part. Seedlings are fertilized with nitrogen from two to four times. The first fertilization is carried out immediately after emergence, and the last at the turn of July and August. During the heat of July and August, plants should be watered. Plants need 25 mm of precipitation, i.e. 25 liters per square meter of surface. We dig out the stump from the seed bed in March or April before the buds appear. It's best to do it with pitchforks. We shake off the ground and choose the best ones. Weak, with a small number of buds, thin and pointed buds with damaged and diseased roots are discarded. If they are fused, separate them. Two plants planted too close will compete with each other for nutrients and space and the yield will be poor. The dug up plants should be protected against drying, heating and freezing. It is best to plant them immediately, but if this is not possible, they should be spread out in a cool, dry, and airy place as they tend to infuse and rot when too wet. They can be stored for a maximum of 10 days. Then the rootstock should be pitted if it is not possible to plant them. Liming the soil immediately with a large dose can be harmful. Lime should be thoroughly mixed with the soil by digging. Weeds, in particular permanent ones such as horsetail, bindweed, thistle, or couch grass, cannot grow on such a patch. They must be removed before asparagus cultivation is established, because after they grow, it is difficult to fight them among asparagus. In large fields, chemicals are used to control weeds. Mostly before growth and the second time in mid-September after plowing the soil. At the end of summer, we fertilize the soil with manure or compost by digging in a dose of 40 to 80 tons per one hectare. If we do not have such fertilizers, green fertilizers such as rye, oats, or mustard can be used. The decomposition of green manures will be accelerated by nitrogen fertilization in the amount of 50 kg per 1 hectare, 150 kg of ammonium nitrate or 250 kg of ammonium sulfate. If the soil has the correct reaction, e.g. neutral, is rich in humus, 
you can start cultivation already this season. Asparagus likes manure, so it is good to give 4 to 5 kilograms of manure or possibly 10 kilograms of compost before setting up the plantation. After that, it is fed with manure every 2 or 3 years. Before winter, the soil should be dug deep to throw the necrosis on the soil surface. Before digging, phosphate fertilizers are used and potassium fertilizers are applied to the dug soil. All these activities are performed before asparagus cultivation is established. Depending on the abundance of the soil, in autumn, you can give 40% or 60% potassium salt and phosphate rock meal or single superphosphate. In the spring, you should give another dose of potassium salt fertilizers and single superphosphate, or triple superphosphate. In order to correctly determine the doses, it is best to take soil samples from several places in layers of 30 and 60 centimeters. The content of phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium should be determined in the samples. It is important to dig deep into fertilizers containing potassium because phosphorus penetrates the soil very slowly, and once the asparagus is planted, it will no longer be possible to place it for the main root mass. For bleached asparagus, dig the soil to a depth of 60 cm and for green asparagus to a depth of 40 cm. This has a significant impact on development and growth. Mineral fertilizers, especially potassium and phosphorus, should be found in these deep layers. In early spring, dragging is carried out and then phosphate and potassium fertilizers are sown. If it was not possible to apply fertilization in the fall, in the spring apply about 100 kg of phosphorus and 200 kg of potassium per 1 hectare. After such preparation of the soil, it is time to plant the carp. One-year-old carp are used to establish the asparagus. They are more vital than those two or three years old and take better. Asparagus is planted in the first or second half of April, but it can be planted earlier. Later planted stumps are poorly established due to low rainfall and too high temperature. On a properly prepared bed, rows should be marked in the north-south direction to ensure uniform heating of the embankments. On the south slope, the rows should run perpendicular to the slope to prevent soil erosion and the retention of fertilizers and herbicides. On large plantations, the distance between the rows is 150 cm usually embankments are built every 2 meters. When cultivating plantations longer than 10 years, larger distances should be used. A distance of less than 1.5 meters results in a lower yield and bleached asparagus should be planted very deep. The created embankments often crumble and need to be repaired if the distance is too small. On the bed, you can use a row spacing of 80 to 100 centimeters, but the smaller the distance, the more the life of the plantation is shortened. The planting line is best marked with poles and a string tied between them. Before planting the carp, dig holes 40 centimeters wide and 30 centimeters deep. Do not put manure or any fertilizers in the holes because you can burn the seedlings or dry out the soil. Manure must be applied in the autumn of the previous year over the entire area. Usually, a reserve of 10% of the stumps is left for possible filling in the gaps of unaccepted cuttings. Seedlings should be placed in the soil as soon as possible. If you have your own seedlings, dig them up immediately before planting and leave 10% of the seedlings in the seed bed. Small. Weak carp with a small amount of buds are discarded, and so the yield from them will be poor. Conjoined plants must be separated because two intergrown carps will yield less than one separated. In order for the roots to spread freely in the hole, you can create a small mound and plant a rootstock on it. The distance between the rootstocks in a row should be from 30 cm to 50 cm, usually 40 cm is used. They are densely planted, although they produce a lot of protrusions, but they are thin. Then, in the following years, not only are they thin, but there are fewer and fewer of them. Dense planting can be afforded when we have very good and rich soil and we do not plan to grow this vegetable for a long time. Over time, the stumps may lose their vitality or die, it is worth marking the planting place with, for example, a stuck stick. Then we see whether the plant is growing there properly, whether it is large, or whether it needs to be replaced. 
It should be noted that the rootstock should be planted with the buds pointing in one direction and along the row, not perpendicularly to the row, as they will grow across the row and then it will be difficult to care for the plants between the rows. The shoots, instead of growing up in the mounds, will grow on the sides of the embankments, which will make them shorter. We spread the roots radially in the dug hole. If they are too long, do not cut them or arrange them on both sides along the furrow, but place them diagonally to the furrows so that they fit. After inserting the roots, they should be back filled and trampled. If you intend to chemically combat weeds, the stump should be covered with a thicker layer of soil. The proper yield of such an asparagus plantation begins only in the third year. If in the autumn of the second year the plants are weak, have few shoots and are short, we start harvesting in the fourth year. However, before we start collecting, for the first one to three years, we must properly care for the rootstock. Starting care only when we want to collect asparagus is a mistake. During the first years, asparagus should take root well and accumulate nutrients to produce abundant crops for harvesting in later years. Seasonal vegetables such as tomatoes or beans should not be grown between the asparagus, as this prevents proper care of the asparagus. After planting the rootstock, manure can be placed in the rows between the rootstocks. In the event of drought, it is necessary to water, do not forget about their care, even if we do not collect them for the first few years. All newly planted plants should sprout by the end of May. Where asparagus did not take root, we put reserve plants from the seed bed. Plants planted later, only in summer, do not take well. Empty spots noted in the fall can be filled in the spring of the following year. In the first year, asparagus should be fertilized three times with nitrogen. The first time in early June, then in July, then until mid-August. Late fertilization of plants with nitrogen reduces their resistance to frost. Phosphate and potassium fertilizers are applied in autumn before digging the inter rows. In the spring, in the second year of cultivation, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium fertilization is applied jointly in the inter rows that we dig. In subsequent years, fertilization is the same as in the first year. If the soil is low in humus, it should be enriched with a fertilizer such as decomposed manure. We spread 30 tons of manure per hectare. The basic treatment, both in the first and in the following years, is weed control. Be careful not to damage or break the stems. In the first years, irrigation is especially beneficial for asparagus. Then the weak root system grows profusely. Particular attention should be paid to asparagus when they begin to emerge in early spring. They are then prone to rust attacks and squish asparagus, especially if older asparagus or plants of this family are nearby. Young plants are much weaker and more susceptible to diseases and pests than older plants. When damage is observed, it should be dealt with immediately. Stems affected by rust must be cut low at the base in autumn, after drying, collected and burned. In the year of establishment of the plantation, these places should be marked with stakes before cutting the shoots. If the shoots are healthy, do not cut them in the fall, but leave them for the winter. They stop the snow and provide protection against frost. In the spring, they can be cut down and dug up with the soil. In autumn, the inter rows should also be dug, but so as not to damage the rootstock. After three or four years, the plantation should be ready for harvesting. In the following years, the care consists in sequentially performed activities such as mineral fertilization, digging the soil, laying embankments, if we cultivate white asparagus, weed control, and improving the embankments after harvest, followed by mineral fertilization again, and every three years organic fertilization, top dressing with nitrogen irrigation, weed, disease, and pest control, pruning of shoots affected by rust and pests, subsequent organic fertilization if needed, or liming if needed and finally digging up the soil. Fertilization Asparagus has the highest fertilization requirements in the first years of yielding, from the third to the sixth year after planting the carp. This is when the carp and its root system grow the most. After harvesting, the asparagus begins to search for and take up nutrients again. 
nitrogen uptake lasts until August, and phosphorus and potassium uptake until the end of October. The use of mineral fertilizers by the plant, in particular phosphorus and potassium, depends on rainfall. The total amount of fertilizers that should be applied depends on the fertility of the soil, manure fertilization, removing or leaving shoots for the winter, as well as plant density and the age of the plantation. Asparagus is a plant that tolerates soil salinity very well, so over fertilization is impossible. All nitrogen fertilizers can be used, including urea. Where soils are rich in calcium, ammonium sulfate can be used, which is mixed with the soil. Phosphorus is used in the form of superphosphate. Soils with a pH above 7 are fertilized with boronate superphosphate every few years. Asparagus is sensitive to a lack of boron in the soil, but its excess is harmful to it. Potassium should be used in the form of potassium salt, because it contains its chloride and not sulfate, which is less beneficial for this vegetable. The entire dose of phosphate fertilizers and most of the potassium fertilizers should be applied in the spring and the remaining amount at the end of the harvest. If you have not been able to apply fertilizers in the spring, you can apply them at the end of the harvest, but remember that with little rainfall, the fertilizers will not be fully used by the plants. It is possible that heavy nitrogen fertilization before harvesting increases the percentage of brackish and flattened branches. Nitrogen fertilization before the resumption of vegetation is used only in the cultivation of green asparagus. Green and bleached asparagus are fertilized with nitrogen fertilizer at a dose of 50 kg per hectare, 10 to 14 days before the end of harvest, so that the plants are well supplied with this nutrient when they grow out. If this has not been done before the end of the harvest, it should be done at the end of the harvest, also using potassium fertilizers together. For bleached asparagus, we apply fertilizers before spreading the embankments and after backfilling them. The next such dose is applied 20 to 14 days after the end of harvest. This causes a strong growth of assimilating shoots. Further nitrogen fertilization, two or one dose is applied until mid-August. Too late nitrogen fertilization reduces frost resistance and causes asparagus to grow in autumn, which consume more nutrients than they take in, which can significantly weaken them. All fertilizers in the plantations that are producing are spread over the entire surface. All fertilizers, apart from saltpeter used for top dressing, are then mixed with the soil when digging between the rows. Every two to three years, fertilize a yielding asparagus crop with 20 to 40 tons of manure per hectare, or 50 to 100 cubic meters of slurry per hectare, or 20 to 40 tons of compost per hectare. If you have plant manure, you can use it every four weeks by watering the plants with manure, e.g. from nettle in the appropriate dilution. The lighter the soil and the less humus it contains, the more often it is necessary to use organic fertilizers, which increase its water absorption and improve its structure. The younger the plants, the greater the influence of organic fertilization on the quality and yield, as well as the length of the period of use of yielding plants. In the case of bleached asparagus, organic fertilizer is applied either before plowing the embankments, giving it to the inter rows, or in autumn, after cutting the shoots, to the entire field. This autumn fertilization is also used for green asparagus. Manure thrown between embankments may contain straw, but then the dose of nitrogen should be increased. On the other hand, manure applied in the fall must be completely decomposed. If organic fertilization is not applied in the soil, magnesium deficiency may occur. In this case, magnesium sulfate should be applied at a rate of up to 100 kg per hectare if it is anhydrous, and up to 200 kg per hectare if hydrated. Before winter, improve the soil by digging it shallowly and not too close to the rows. In regions where there are frosty and snowless winters, green asparagus stumps and white asparagus embankments should be additionally sprinkled with soil and then raked in the spring. Rolling dikes for bleached asparagus. The embankments are filled before the sprouts grow up to the soil surface. Shaping the embankment too late will result in a large percentage of asparagus with purple-pink heads. The embankments should be erected in the first or second decade of April. 
The soil should be of adequate moisture, not too wet or a hard crust will form and the asparagus will not be able to come out or will be crooked, but also not too dry or the shafts will fall apart. The embankments are built by extracting the soil from the inter rows. The shafts should be semicircular with a slightly flattened top or be trapezoidal along the length. Triangle shaped shafts easily fall apart or are washed away by rain, exposing the heads, asparagus is shorter and grows sideways. In the first year, the dikes can be 40 cm wide and 20 cm high. In the following year, the width of the embankment should be 60 cm, and even up to 90 cm in fields with large crops. The height of such an embankment should be 30 cm from the field surface, i.e. about 50 cm from the bottom of the passage between the embankments. Then it's time to weed the weeds and fix the dikes. The mere interference with the embankments, their scattering and repiling results in a smaller number of weeds. There are usually so few of them that they are removed by hand, but you can also use herbicides to which older asparagus are resistant. It is more difficult to destroy perennial weeds that could not be removed before asparagus was planted. Care should be taken to keep the surface of the rollers smooth and free of weeds at all times. This is important because it shows cracks in the soil where the asparagus is near the surface. Herbicides are used not to damage the roots and shoots of asparagus, but they often do not work on perennial weeds that then grow. So it is better to remove all kinds of weeds by hand along with the roots and rhizomes. In case of strong infusion, the preparations are also used in autumn. Horsetail and bindweed are the most difficult to combat because herbicides are often too weak. All herbicides are applied to moist soil and plenty of water. If there is a large amount of grass on a large area, preparations to combat grass clumps are used after harvest. After the embankments are backfilled and asparagus sprouts, weeds should be combated by hand. Herbicide can be applied after harvest. Sprays and doses should be used in accordance with the attached leaflet of the preparation manufacturer. Dike Dikes the dikes should be plowed up immediately after harvesting. This will allow access of water from precipitation and air. The deeper layers heat up better, which will result in the rapid growth of the next batch of asparagus. Such digging also reduces the incidence of diseases. Irrigation Well-watered soil allows denser planting of asparagus and the use of higher doses of fertilizers and fertilization after harvest. Irrigation during drought and water scarcity prevents wilting of shoot tips. Irrigation therefore increases fertility and crop size. In the climatic conditions of Poland, irrigation is recommended on light soils with a low level of groundwater. Research shows that excessive irrigation during the harvest period slightly reduces the yield of asparagus. After winter and spring rainfall, asparagus usually has enough water and does not need additional watering. From mid-June, you should already pay attention to soil moisture and start watering. In the period of plowing, in the absence of rainfall, this treatment has a negative effect on the growth of asparagus. Irrigation is applied at the rate of 30 to 40 mm of water per hectare and the treatment is repeated in July. This stimulates the growth of shoots right after harvesting and enables better utilization of fertilizers by the plant. This also allows you to get a higher yield the next year. Irrigation treatment should be performed in the morning, so that the plants are not wet for too long, as this is conducive to infection by grey mold and asparagus rust. Cutting the stems Disease prevention by removing affected shoots If you leave healthy asparagus shoots for the winter, they will protect the plant from freezing. In addition, they enrich the soil with valuable ingredients. However, if shoots are affected by rust or asparagus needs to be cut, they should be cut to limit the spread of diseases. Shoots are cut as low as possible, usually in early November after stronger frosts. Do not cut them too early, because then a large amount of nutrients are lost, or too late, because diseases from the affected shoots can spread more. Fruits with seeds may also fall, which will cause seedlings to grow in undesirable places, they will grow too densely and this will reduce the yield. The affected shoots are harvested immediately and burned. Calcium Carbonate Liming the soil for asparagus The pH of the soil should be tested approximately every three years. 
if the pH is lower than 6.0 in light soils and below 6.5 in medium soils, lime should be added to the soil after cutting the stems in autumn. About 1.5 tons of magnesium lime are used per hectare. Lime should be mixed with the soil. In the summer of the following year, after liming, the pH of the soil is checked. If it is still too low, apply the same amount of lime as before. If necessary, lime is applied in subsequent years, so as to obtain a soil with a pH value of 6.5 for light soils and up to 7.0 for medium soils. Do not use large doses of calcium at one time because it is harmful. You cannot increase the pH value of the soil above 7.0 because asparagus does not tolerate it well. They then feel a deficiency of some micronutrients, such as boron. If the pH of the soil is above 8.0, physiological acid fertilizers should be used, e.g. ammonium sulfate and boron fertilization in the form of boronate superphosphate or borax at a dose of 20 kg per 1 hectare. Harvest When the time finally comes to harvest asparagus, it is worth knowing that proper harvesting has an impact on further yields and subsequent harvests. Improper cutting of the bracts, in particular the bleached ones, reduces the yield by 20% and further reduces the quality of the yield and the life of the plantation. The beginning of the asparagus harvest in Poland falls at the end of April or the first days of May. The harvest of green asparagus starts a little earlier. Green asparagus grows faster but is more vulnerable to frost. Green asparagus is harvested every two or three days at first, especially when frosts recur. After that, harvesting is carried out once a day. During the heat, which causes the heads to loosen, it is collected even twice a day. Picking white asparagus depends on the temperature and moisture of the soil as well as sunlight, which determine the growth rate of white asparagus. At the beginning of the harvest season, especially when the cold weather returns, asparagus can grow slowly. They are best harvested in cloudy weather one or two times a day. When the weather is favorable and asparagus grows quickly, they are harvested on plantations in the morning, evening, and even in the afternoon, i.e. three times a day. The morning harvest is done very early so that the bracts that have grown overnight don't turn purple. You can also use special shading foils that do not let the rays through. Walking along the embankments, their surface is observed, which under the pressure of the outgoing protrusions form cracks. There is asparagus here that needs to be harvested. The soil around the asparagus is carefully shoveled and cut 3 to 4 centimeters above the stump. Cutting too low causes damage to the stumps and reduces yields in the following years. We cut out all the stems ready for harvesting, even the thin and shapeless ones. After cutting the asparagus, the place is filled with soil, first wet, then dry, and finally compacted. Green bracts are usually cut 1 to 2 centimeters below the surface of the ground as soon as they reach 15 to 20 centimeters in length. If it's very warm, even shorter shoots are cut out so that they don't start to bloom. It is best to pick asparagus in the morning because then they are firm and do not wilt so quickly. In hot weather, it is a good idea to line the harvest basket with a damp cloth. About 100 kilograms of asparagus are harvested per hectare per day. On average, it is about 70 kilograms. The greatest intensity of yielding in Poland cultivated in the ground falls on the last two decades of May, and sometimes even on the first decade of June. Asparagus is of the best quality during this period. Asparagus then grows quickly because it is warm, but it is also sufficiently moist. Later on, however, high temperatures and drought cause the green asparagus in particular to loosen up. Low temperature and drought causes woodiness, bitterness, and a stronger purple color. During the cold season, green asparagus forms curved heads, and in heavy and too wet soils, white asparagus shows rusting. At the beginning of the season, there are larger amounts of rotten asparagus, with empty chambers inside that look like they were fused together from two pieces. At the beginning of the harvest asparagus is thicker, then at the end of the season it becomes thinner. In the first year, asparagus is harvested for two or three weeks, but no later than June 1st. 
extending the harvest of such a young plant and heavy exploitation will reduce its lifespan by five years. In subsequent years, the harvest period should not exceed 50 to 60 days and end from the 20th to the 24th of June. Ending the harvest too early causes not only a low yield this year, but also lower yields in the following years. The quality and lifespan of the plantation is deteriorating. However, it is better to shorten the harvest period than to extend it. How to speed up the yielding of asparagus? Asparagus does not go completely dormant and as soon as the right temperature is provided, it will start growing regardless of the season. In Italy, accelerated tillage is used for the Christmas harvest. There are several ways to speed up the growth of asparagus. The first is the heating of the soil. You can also cover the shafts with transparent polyethylene foil. Another way is to cover the plantation with inspection boxes, homemade greenhouses, or tunnels. Finally, you can also grow asparagus in a greenhouse. In Poland, covering with polyethylene foil will be a good way, while other methods are quite expensive. By covering the embankments with foil, the temperature of the soil is 3 to 6 degrees Celsius higher and remains for some time after removing the foil. Thanks to this treatment, the bracts grow faster and grow earlier. In this way, we start harvesting earlier and finish at the same time as without the use of foil, which gives us a larger harvest. This gives us 3 to 4 weeks more harvest. Of course, you can also finish the harvest 3 to 4 weeks earlier, obtaining the same yield as without the foil, but we extend the plant's photosynthesis time, which ensures a higher yield next year. The earlier end of the asparagus harvest allows you to save time that can be spent during this period, for example, on strawberries. Many years of research carried out in France have shown that covering asparagus with foil increases the yield by 30%, moreover, the quality of the shoots was better. In addition, the film makes the soil under it lighter, so harvesting is easier. Due to the fact that it has a better structure, asparagus can also be grown on slightly heavier soils. Such effects were obtained only with the use of polyethylene film. The effects of using the so-called smoke gas had no such effect, they were much worse. To cover the embankments, a foil with a width of 1.4 m and a thickness of about 0.04 mm is used on plantations. At the beginning of flowering, the film is placed on freshly made embankments after the surface has slightly dried. Immediately before applying the film, herbicides are applied in a large amount of water. The film is left for 3 to 4 weeks or for the entire harvest period. The edges of the foil are covered with soil. The bumps on the foil indicate where the bumps are growing out. We apply the foil at the beginning of May. Asparagus Harvest Storage Cut asparagus is very unstable, changes in quality occur quickly from the moment of harvesting. The faster you chill them, the longer they stay fresh. Longer exposure to sunlight on the white bracts makes them light pink or purple. At higher temperatures, asparagus dries easily and becomes fibrous, the heads loosen and the scales stick out, the higher the temperature, the faster changes in the acid content in relation to sugars occur, resulting in a worse taste. For storage, white asparagus is washed in water at 10 degrees Celsius, while green asparagus must not be washed because it will start to rot, especially the heads. The optimal storage temperature for asparagus is around 5 degrees Celsius and the air humidity is 85 to 95 percent. In these conditions, with proper aeration, asparagus can be stored for 10 days. It can be stored longer in specialized cold stores. If we want to store white asparagus for a long time, it is worth soaking them for 10 minutes in water at a temperature of 1 degree Celsius and then refrigerating. Pests and Diseases, Protection It is worth preventing diseases and pests of asparagus. The yield increased in this way exceeds the inputs many times over. Initially, the disease can be overlooked because mainly carp are damaged, and the reduced yield and damage cost are visible only in the next year. It is especially important to protect the plantation in the first years when the plants are young and we are not harvesting them yet. Diseases and pests that attack young plants in this period can significantly reduce yields in subsequent years of harvest, if we neglect the plantation. 
the most difficult is the fight against green asparagus insects during their harvest, when they attack and insecticides cannot be used. The most dangerous diseases of asparagus include rust and diseases of the base of shoots and roots, causing the gradual death of plants. Rust on the studs, voids inside and adhesions are physiological diseases. The most dangerous asparagus pests are the asparagus moth and the asparagus and 12-spot beetle. Infectious Diseases of Asparagus Asparagus Rust It is a fungus of the Puccinia asparagi species, which infects the above-ground part of plants, inhibiting its development, causing premature yellowing and drying of shoots and falling branches. The skin over accumulated rust spots breaks, which increases transpiration and weakens photosynthesis. The amount of nutrients decreases and the plant yields poorly the next year. In dry years and on light soils, they begin to dry out, which reduces yields by 40%. If the disease lasts for several years, the plants weaken and die. Asparagus rust occurs only on asparagus and can be windblown from older infected plantations or nearby wild plants. Talutospores, i.e. spores of the fungus, overwinter on the remains of above-ground shoots. In spring, the spores begin to germinate and infect the plants. They germinate until the end of June, then the threat decreases. The condition for infection is the presence of water droplets, so asparagus under cover or on weedy plantations where the dew dries late is the most common and the first to be infected, or there are often fogs. In spring, the symptoms are hardly visible. First it's light green spots turning into orange. The summer cycle in the development period lasts 12 days. The infestation is especially severe in warm and humid years. In the fall, there is also a disease that forms winter spores. It is best to choose resistant varieties or to fight the disease by cutting the diseased shoots as close to the base as possible and burning them. If the disease occurs annually in high intensity, chemical spraying should be carried out. Appropriate fungicides are used. If there are also violins on the plantation, you can use the preparations together with insecticidal spraying. Diseases of the stem base and root system. Fusarium oxysporum and Fusarium culmarum. These diseases cause the gradual death of the plantation. The first clear symptoms do not appear until several years after infection. These fungi can reside and survive in the soil for many years. The shoots wither earlier, turn yellow and dry up during the summer. After some time, the plants die. There are longitudinal red-brown discolorations on the roots, followed by necrosis and dry rot. Similar discoloration can be seen in the lower part of the shoots. The source of infection is already sick rootstock that has been planted, soil or diseased seeds. The development of this fungus is favored by too dense planting and density of plants, too heavy, excessively moist soil and its too acid reaction. To reduce the occurrence of these diseases, asparagus should be grown on suitable soil and a seed bed should be established at the earliest after five years on which asparagus had previously grown. Asparagus should not be grown after perennial legumes. A good way is fertilizing with manure and liming to acidic soil, it limits the development of fungi. Gray Mold Botrytis cinerea It occurs rarely on asparagus in the Polish climate. The development of the disease is favored by high humidity, which occurs in windless, sunken, and heavily weedy areas. The disease causes premature withering of shoots in autumn and a lower yield the next year. The same methods and agents are used to combat mold as to combat rust. The rotting of the sprouts. They are caused by penicillin and fusarium or bacteria. The bracts become infected in the field or during storage. Rotting is prevented by refrigeration and cold storage. Physiological diseases. Wilting of the tops of the shoots. The reason is disturbances in the water management of plants. The upper part of the shoots growing in July and August, before the formation of branches, wilts. Then it dries up hanging down. The rest of the plant is healthy. The phenomenon takes place especially after a wet period and during strong growth in a drought period. Rusting of the tabs. Spots appear on the underground part of the shoots, which then form wounds. The disease affects asparagus growing on heavy soils but also on light ones if it is cool and moist. 
Ripping of the tabs. They occur mainly at the beginning of growth. Asparagus has empty chambers. The cause is cold and snowless winters, especially if there is a sudden warming. Staining of the tabs. Asparagus looks like it's fused together and is usually hollow inside. Bitterness and fibrousness of asparagus. It appears when growth is inhibited, e.g. during cold and humid weather or drought, or when stored incorrectly in heat, without protection against moisture loss. Curving of the tabs. The reason for this may be a large amount of stones in the soil, undecomposed manure and other debris, or a crust on the surface of the dike or soil. Curving is also the result of even a slight injury to the young bract or damage by pests. The upper part of green asparagus curves in the cold season, especially when combined with strong wines. Reddening of the bumps. Occurs on loose soils when it is dry and warm or when transported in warm and sunny conditions. To prevent this, the tabs should be covered immediately after harvesting. A blue or green head on white asparagus is a sign that it was harvested too late. Loosening the heads. Green asparagus may have loose heads before they reach the right height. This is due to too shallow planting of the carp and high temperature during growth. To prevent this, add an extra layer of soil to the stump. Pests. Flap asparagus. Platyperia postloptera. Also commonly known as the asparagus fly, it is a fly with a zigzag stripe on its wings. It lays eggs from April to July inside young asparagus. The larvae burrow inside the asparagus, causing the shoot to twist into a pastoral shape. Eventually, the asparagus stops growing, turns yellow and dies. The larvae transform at the bottom of the asparagus near the carp itself. It is especially dangerous for the plantation in its first years. Plantations covered with foil give them ideal conditions for prolonging reproduction. A sure way is to cut shoots very low in the fall and burn them. You can also cut out the affected shoots during the summer and destroy them. It is difficult to fight it even chemically. On one and two year old plantations, spraying is applied from mid-April three times every seven days. On yielding plantations, the treatment is performed after the harvest is completed. These remedies also work for hives. The beater moves very easily so all plants should be sprayed. Fiddler Cryoceres duodecim punctata The twospit fiddler beetle is somewhat similar to a ladybug, and the asparagus honey beetle is blue-green with three pairs of yellow spots. They overwinter in sheltered places, e.g. in forests or on plantations in old remnants of shoots. In April, they leave their hiding places and set out to feed. The larvae feed from the end of May to the end of June. There is also a second generation in August. They especially attack the green bracts, drilling holes in them. If there is a large number of pests, chemical spraying is used. Plants cannot be wet during spraying as it will be ineffective. Due to the toxins contained in the sprays, they must not be used during harvest and flowering in order not to poison the bees. Aphids. They rarely attack asparagus but sometimes they like young bracts or asparagus growing on the seed bed. They attack when the seed bed is heavily weeded. First they feed on weeds and after weeds are removed they move to asparagus. Chemical sprays are usually used. In the end, it is best to collect and burn all crop residues and dry asparagus waste to prevent pests and diseases from developing. If we throw the contaminated leftovers in the compost, they will survive there and everything will spread and also infect the compost. Variations Depending on the variety, we will get a larger or smaller yield with different characteristics. The best will be those with high fertility for as many years as possible, resistant to diseases, preferably consisting of male specimens. For the cultivation of bleached asparagus, it should be an early variety. For green asparagus, a later variety, so that they are not damaged by frost. The oldest and most popular variety is Mary Washington from the USA. It was a good variety, but over time it lost its original characteristics and became susceptible to rust. Limbres. Dutch variety with thick bracts, very fertile, early. Schwetzinger. It comes from West Germany, very fertile with thick sprouts, 
it grows strongly similar to the Hutchels variety. Diane, Minevra, Junon are varieties from France with well-balanced characteristics and prolific. Lucullus Obtained in West Germany with only male specimens. Alexander This is an interesting variety from France that does not contain anthocyanins and does not stain pink-purple in the sun. Eros It comes from the GDR. It is a tetraploid variety with thick spikes and a high yield. Choosing the right variety is very important because this choice will determine the quality of asparagus for many years. Varieties with good characteristics should be selected. Varieties undergo unfavorable changes over time, therefore seeds of the same variety from different sources may have different quality. Selection can significantly improve the quality of your plants. Fleshy, thick bracts of the best quality are selected and the seeds are extracted from them. It is not advisable to collect seeds from weak, thin, and sickly individuals because they pass on the characteristics to further generations.